the next few minutes, we will tell you about the integration problem for the for railway operations. It's a problem that looks at first sight not very complicated, but like many real-world situations, it turned out to be non-trivial. Early this year, we carried out a quick startup program with two experts from WSO2. We were able to build prototypes for all the building blocks to a solution to our problem in one week. The content of our talk. First, I will familiarize you with the context of our problem. Then Matthias will tell you about the project setup. He is followed by Andre, who will add a couple of points about finer details of the interfaces. And I will sum up with some remarks on the architecture of the solution. BLS is Switzerland's second largest railway. It, is, it has a market share of about 15%, depending on how you measure it. And it employs 3,000 people with about 20 nationalities. BLS runs urban and regional passenger trains in the region of the Swiss capital Bern. BLS also runs freight trains across the Alps from northern Europe to Italy and locally in Switzerland. And PLS also, also operates a standard gauge rail network of about 500 kilometers. A most notable element of this railway network is the Lodgeberg Base Tunnel crossing the Alps. It's about 35 kilometers long and it was opened in 2007. It's a main link on the European rail network for both freight and high-speed passenger trains. Now to the problem. The uh, European Commission changed rules in the railway business in the 1990s. Infrastructure operators were required to separate from train operating companies. The reason for this was that the European Commission wanted to create a more efficient rail network and wanted to create more competition. So a train operating company wanting to run a train on a network had to request a train path from the train operator and had to pay for this path. In 2007, the main Swiss railway infrastructure operator had to replace its 25-year-old timetable time table planning system. The system had interfaces to about 50 other systems from different railway companies. Unfortunately, the governance and funding of these projects implementing the change was not clarified in advance and this resulted in a delay of about 10 years and in tripled costs. Now to Matthias for the project setup. started in 2013 with the analysis of the interfaces and the cooperation between the railway uh, infrastructure operator. The joint specifications of the three interfaces, the IT master plan and the joint funding were the main part of the first work we did. The three interfaces and the providing platform are now regarded as a collaboration between the three infrastructure operators in Switzerland. This allows for a stable and planned release cycle of the interface specification. A goal of BLS um, is not to have duplicate IT infrastructure components. In the case of the ESP, um, there will be a duplication as the enterprise resource planning system has its own tool set, including an ESP but uh, it was considered as not appropriate for the tasks at hand, so another product was evaluated. PLS had uh, evaluated at first a product in 2013, which was based on the Java Enterprise Application Server we already had in production. 
due to the fact that the product was still incomplete in the summer 2014 and its roadmap remained unclear, we had to start a, a re-evaluation. Here you do see the evaluation timeline in more detail. After the, the management agreed to replace the ESP product, we were able to react rapidly. The requirements of the platform were already defined and could be reused after a very short uh, update. First, we reduced uh, the, the, the set of suitable products uh, by about four criteria. This was good reputation of the company and the product, cost effectiveness and open source if possible. Then we did a more thorough cost-benefit analysis, which I will cover on the next slide. Uh, we decided to build a maximum of three prototypes, starting with the best product from the cost-benefit analysis and stopping when a candidate uh, pr pr product proved itself. This resulted in a one-week proof of concept in the form of the Quick Start program offering by WSO2. We built prototype solutions for the relevant use cases, as Thomas said, of our integration problems. The work was done jointly by staff from WSO2 and local development partners who assisted and built up product know-how themselves. The cost utility analysis was done by experts in, in their field. Three are giving now the talk. <coughs> we analyzed for company, product, community, and soft factors. By partners, we mean integration partners in Switzerland. Company health includes the balance sheet, growth, product success, for example, the number of downloads, activity, release, release schedule, and especially also the adherence to the published release schedule. Um, but also is important to note is that uh, products don't live on their own, but need an ecosystem that is a prospering community. For uh, WSO, we went to visit Igor Berchtold from SUVA, that is the Swiss Accident Insurance Fund, as a reverence implementation. Soft factors is also quite important. It covers the, the gut feelings of the experts and all other aspects that are hard to attribute uh, directly to a predefined criterion. In our view, it is important to get this kind of feedback from your experts too. Since the quick start uh, startup program, the buildup of the ESP platform and the implementation of interface applications started in different projects within BLS. We are sure that the, the product selected will be a very useful component in the integration landscape of BLS. Now to In the next few minutes, I will give you a short overview about the main challenges we had in the business analysis in this uh, project. Our starting point was that we have to migrate two interfaces to two new file-based interfaces between the railway infrastructure operator and the train operating uh, company. The first challenge was that our business division was not aware about the change because they did not realize that the new interfaces will have an impact on the existing business processes and also on the workflows in the integrated resource planning uh, system. A few years ago, the railway infrastructure operator replaced the route planning uh, system and they did a lot of uh, big changes and therefore they decided to bring the new interfaces in two steps uh, to production. First, they decided to replace the internal interfaces to their own systems and in the second step, they decided to replace the interfaces to all um, Swiss 
uh, public transport companies, and that infects around 50 uh, companies. <coughs> um, the second uh, challenge was that the, the process between the train operating company and the railway infrastructure operator is not very well documented. And the result of the, of the process depends on how the train planner creates the requests and how the train planners handles the, the request. And therefore, we have to implement a lot of uh, business rules to validate the path prov provisioning uh, answer to be sure that we can make a, a proper uh, process uh, over the whole end-to-end um, -end process. The other two challenges are more from a technical side of view. It is the problem that there is no unique identifier or no technical unique identifier to find a pass. And therefore, we had to use uh, a business key. And the business key can change during the process. And therefore, we also had to implement a lot of, of rules to be sure that we catch the right paths to uh, process uh, an update or to delete uh, a pass. The other challenge is that the process is uh, a long-running one. So between a pass request until the delivery, uh, between one, one and a half years, so we have to store a lot of data on the integration platform that we can run all the validations we need to be sure that uh, the process uh, is faulty processing. So to summarize the, the lessons learned, make sure that the business division is aware about all the, the changes and all the impacts on the existing uh, systems. Make sure that the existing process is well documented and make sure that you know how to handle uh, the data. And with these three uh, key learnings, we are sure that it is possible to implement uh, the solution until end of this year. Hmm? Now for a few remarks about the architecture. We have a problem we face recurringly with our project teams. Namely, that the project team often doesn't implement the best fitting solution for a given problem and problem context. Reasons for this are manifold. One reason is a project team often implements the one solution it knows best. For example, the interaction between the different elements, the middleware they use, or the protocols they use. A second reason is often project teams don't fully take in account the non-functional requirements and they don't and use them only partially for designing a solution. A third reason is different teams implement different solutions for similar problems. And the last is often uh, as a specific interaction, uh, integration style is either in fashion or out of fashion, and fi fashion changes over time. So we devised three different tools. One is we developed a set of non-functional properties that are often relevant for describing integration problems. The second is we developed a decision matrix that delivers a number, one or a few uh, integration patterns as candidate solutions. And the third is we um, described each of these patterns in implementation guides that describe, for example, which elements form this pattern, how they interact, what middleware is available in our company, what are the 
principles, the regulations for this, and what are options when implementing this pattern, and also caveats. To show you the decision matrix in more detail, on the vertical axis, we have different requirements, for example, technical requirements, um, data transferred per unit of time, but also organizational patterns, who owns the systems involved and how is the governance of these systems. In the, on the horizontal axis, we have different integration patterns that are relevant for our field, for example, file transfer, database, copy, remote procedure call, or event propagation. And the center of the decision matrix is the part that describes how much a certain integration pattern contributes to the solving a uh, specific requirement. What, you, what the input to this integration matrix is, is a set of values describing a specific integration problem. The output is one or two, three integration pattern candidates that have to be evaluated then by the person that does the software architecture. We didn't want to implement here a black box solution, but we wanted to promote design discussion. And um, it turns out that integration problems are not all or nothing, so binary decision trees were not appropriate to describe solutions, but we had to look for a mechanism that takes into account multiple aspects at once, and thus this um, calculation in a, in a, in a more uh, fine-grade way. The last slide here I want to show you what the evolution of the main interface of this multi-step process was. The initial solution to the problem was that files were um, transferred directly from the infrastructure operator to the train operating uh, company on their two different systems. The requirements on this integration were so that we introduced a mediation component, uh, namely the ESP. We used traceability, routing, data validation, data transformation, and um, protocol changes as functionality of this ESP. Then we separated transaction data from master data. Transported by this interface are train paths, these are transaction data, and also data about the railway network, stations and junctions. And we noted that for transaction data, the natural interaction style is a data push event propagation. For master data, there are two different natural styles. One is you distribute the master data together with the transaction data in a data push, or for example, if you want to uh, maintain a copy in the target system, you implement a data pool. And we were able to implement that by adding a data services server. Future work to be done, the infrastructure um, operator treats every interface of this multi-step process as an individual interface and also the the business and IT teams are separated. Um, a result of that is that it is difficult for train operators to correlate a path request with a path delivered and with an info invoice for this path. So a future problem will be to solve the whole uh, process uh, as, as a, a multi-step process and um, to correlate the different um, interactions on the different interfaces uh, as a whole process. Finally, I want to thank the different people that were involved in our work. This is Suho, Nirmal, Dasana, then Reto, Charlotte, Michael, and also Igor Bergdold, who introduced us to the product and to the company. Thank you very much.
Oh, 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 oh,